Hello, welcome to IGTV. I'm Angeline Ong, and this is your special look ahead to the week starting the 9th of October. And what a week it will be. First up, we've got plenty of economic data uh, from Germany. We've got industrial production numbers. And also, there's going to be quite a bit of uh, talk of interest rates again because somewhere midweek we've got the FOMC minutes. But before that, on Tuesday, let's have a look at what else we've got. Uh, from the UK, the BRC Retail Sales Monitor. From Australia, uh, consumer confidence and business confidence uh, data will be key after the uh, Reserve Bank of Australia kept rates on hold. And from the United States, wholesale inventories to boot. Midweek, as I mentioned earlier, we've got the minutes from the FOMC, producer price index data from the US, as, as well as API crude oil inventories too. And we finish up the week uh, on Thursday with monthly GDP numbers, trade balance figures from the UK and industrial production. Plus, watch out for the uh, CPI out of the US. This could move the dollar. Uh, anything inflation related, of course, might give us a sense of what the Fed might do before the end of this year. Initial jobless claims and the EIA crude oil inventories, too. And on Friday, we end with quite a bit of uh, data out of China. Uh, its inflation figures, produ producer price index as well, and trade balance numbers out of uh, the world's second biggest economy. We also get industrial production figures out of the Eurozone after quite mixed signals from Germany, it must be said, and the consumer confidence reading out of the US and the Baker Hughes oil rig count. Let's join uh, my colleague from uh, Tasty now. Uh, Bat, thank you so much for joining us all the way from Chicago it's so early and also sending this pin here, which has just arrived. <laughs> yeah, awesome, exactly. Awesome. Um, in terms of volatility and, and next week, where is the volatility uh, if you're looking for that? And of course, the VIX has spiked, hasn't it? Yeah, it sure has going from around 15 to 18, almost a 20 ish percent jump uh, on its high of over 20 at one point. Uh, we want volatility in the market because we, we believe that it's mean reverting uh, more than price of stocks. So for us, uh, volatility is actually a good thing. Some volatility, that Goldilocks, uh, volatility's mean is around 18. And that's right where we sit right now. So a good opportunity for bulls and bears right now. Uh, you've got some stocks that have gotten beaten up. You've got some stocks um, that have held in there pretty nicely. Um, you also have oil volatility uh, percolating. I know you mentioned a bunch of numbers coming out for for earning uh, for um, for oil, which is kind of which is kind of cool. So you're gonna have an exciting week this week. Uh, and stay right there. We'll come uh, right back to you. Of course, rising bond yields higher for longer rates, recession fears, uh, consumption uh, that is uh, looking weak. All that will also feed into volatility. And you're right; it's a big week for corporate news. Uh, we are gearing up for the start of the earnings season. Let's see what we've got on deck here. And our first up in the week, we've got uh, uh, Reach and PepsiCo uh, handing in some of their numbers. PepsiCo is reporting third quarter earnings. And then later on in the week, look out for a page group, which gives us an oversight into how hiring uh, is picking up or slowing down in different jurisdictions. EasyJet, Hayes, Delta Airlines and Walgreens Boots uh, all uh, have either trading statements or third quarter earnings. Uh, this is on Thursday. And then on Friday, that's when the big names appear. The big U.S. banks, J.P. Morgan, Wells Fargo, uh, Citigroup, United Health. Uh, many uh, watching this sector saying that uh, the banks, uh, the ones to look out for, are the ones with exposure or links to the IPO market, which is starting to gather steam out after a two-year drought. United Health also interesting given the strikes across the U.S. Uh, medical sector. Uh, but just coming back to you now, I guess perhaps with uh, many investors waiting on uh, more data to show us uh, where the Fed might move in terms of rates, perhaps earnings uh, might be in closer focus when it comes to prompting volatility. Yeah, it's amazing. You mentioned Pepsi was the first one. It's amazing how we forget about these stocks. Pepsi pays almost a 3% 
uh, dividend. I remember when 3% dividend meant something to people. Here's a stock that's gone from 200 in the last couple of months down to $160. One of those stocks I was just talking about that, you know, if you were looking for something that's uh, more of a allegedly a stable stock, here's one that has a nice dividend and is well uh, uh, making new lows as we speak. JP Morgan, on the other hand, a little bit of a different story in that whole kind of sector of the 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 Russell and the and the banking stocks they've been getting a little bit beat up too uh, not performing as well as the Nasdaq and and the E-mini S and P's but J P Morgan in particular another one that pays almost a four percent dividend three point seven eight um, it's about only ten dollars off its highs so you've got a tale of two different tapes here you've got a an old stock like Pepsi that's getting beat up really out of favor and you got a J P Morgan that's kind of going sideways with a very high implied volatility relative to itself. Thanks very much, Bart. I'm sure we'll uh, check in with you uh, on all that. It's interesting that you also mentioned the Russell 2000 because some out there say that it more accurately reflects the U.S. economy given it has smaller firms and more exposed to macroeconomic conditions. Well, that's uh, all our highlights to the week ahead. Uh, for more analysis and trading insight, do join me on at Angeline Ong on IGTV. Thank you.